What we'd like to do is just very briefly share with you the five dimensions that we work with clients and, and recommend clients to consider when they, when they go on that journey uh, towards more intentional design. And each of those dimensions, they re really represent a spectrum of choices that leaders must make. There's no right or wrong, you know, it's more about what is fit for purpose in your specific context and environment. The first one is about stakeholder engagement and how to best organize the communication with a broad variety of stakeholders, including investors and analysts, the board, the leadership team, employees, partners, suppliers, as well as you know, the communities the organization is embedded in operating. And organizations need to make choices whether to focus on a select group of very primary uh, uh, stakeholders or to engage across a more diverse and often very complex group of stakeholders, I can imagine. And then the second dimension is really about organizing the spotlight. It's about choices on the breadth of your sustainability focus and scope. Will you as an organization have a primary focus, for example, on energy and climate transition? Or does your organization intend to focus on really all aspects, which would then also include ethical supply chain and modern slavery considerations, the increase, increasing need for social cohesion, equality, managing the, the psychosocial risks and well-being, both for your employees, but also the communities you're operating in. And then thirdly, there is the actual structure and the governance dimensions. And you might ask yourself, why is organizing accountability and oversight not the first dimension in this framework? Now, we know from our work with clients that questions on sustainability structures and governance are often answered in the context of the previous two dimensions, some of the choices that you make there. We also see investors and stakeholders increasingly paying very close attention to how organizations design their sustainability operating models to achieve optimal impact. It's not, it's not only about size or about remit or about capability of the sustainability function, but also the governance structures, the controls, the procedures, and the support that, that you have to achieve defined strategies. Some organizations might choose to really centralize a lot of that expertise with centrally led execution of initiatives whereas others might focus on leveraging really local grassroots initiatives with a much smaller centralized governance and reporting layer. And again, it's no right and wrong, it's about choice. Uh, what is fit for purpose in your context? Then the fourth dimension is about resource management. How sustainability talent and capability is managed and deployed across the organization. So against the backdrop of COVID, we have seen a lot of accelerated change with organizations exploring new options in the deployment of talent, including much more fluid teaming to drive sustainability outcomes. On the other end of the spectrum, organizations might see a need to articulate more stable roles in career propositions so that sustainability talent really see a pathway for them to progress within, within that space. And then finally, the fifth dimension is about organizing the numbers. How do metrics, incentives, and funding mechanisms for sustainability strategies all work together? And how are they managed across the organization? We know obviously good quality data, incentives that are linked to KBIs and funding mechanisms are really critical enablers um, for sustainability success. But conversely, we know from our research and client work that short cycle, business case funding, conflicting incentives on, and sometimes limited executive visibility are some of the reasons why sustainability strategies can fall flat. So the, choices, the choice here is, is whether to embed these metrics enterprise-wide or articulate it based on specific sustainability initiatives, project by project. 